a remarkable day on All Sports Asia. One, because we do have an exclusive interview with the technical director of the uh, Badminton Association Malaysia. But two, because that technical director is also the first interview that I've ever done with someone I've commentated with. Morton Frost has joined us uh, today. Morton, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, it, was a Thomas Cup, <laughs> it was a Thomas Cup in Delhi when uh, we were commentating. Yes, we did. Um, and I said, since then, who would have thought in, in Delhi that you know now you'd be here at the uh, BAM for a second stint? Yeah. Nobody. Not even me. Nobody. Well, you did say at the time in the commentating that Malaysia was your, was your second home. Yes, uh, <clears throat> I've travelled a lot to Malaysia in the past when I used to play and obviously I've been here as uh, director of performance in the late 90s. Malaysia has already always had this very special place in my heart and uh, you know, this is, as you say, is kind of a second home now. Let's talk about that. As said, you, you came back in March, first of all. Yes. Um, how's it been the initial settling in and getting back to grips with Malaysia? That has been really easy. Um, as an, uh, I know the background, I know the culture, I know how the system works, uh, lots and lots of things that uh, I, I have a great advantage compared to other people that would maybe come into a job like this as a first timer. So for, for that reason it's been fairly easy to come back here. But obviously it's, it's a job like any other job and they've got all these challenges every single day and something that obviously I have to um, you know, look into, adjust, uh, make new plans, all that. It's, it's a massive job. It is a massive job. Badminton is so big in Malaysia. Um, but your first, moving on from that, your first task, I suppose, in this job was the SEA Games. And that was a very good performance all in all. There was uh, all Malaysian finals, eight uh, medals, two goals. Tell us a bit about that. We'll go through some of the players, but what was the SEA Games like going there with the team? It was good. Uh, we had a previous experience actually going to the Suleiman Cup. We, we had a very good outing there as well. We were in the same group as Korea, um, managed to beat them. They were the second seed of the tournament, managed to beat them in the first round. Obviously, that was a major boost to everything that we were doing, so that was good. Uh, we made the quarterfinal, lost to Korea again, quite unlucky to get them back in the draw. Um, but I think we had a very good outing. Then going on to, to Singapore to the So that, that set up the platform for That set the platform, I think, the foundation for what we were doing. Then Singapore was good. Um, I think we were very well prepared. And uh, we had a nice mixture of uh, experienced players and young players. And I think it came off very nicely. Even some of the very young players did extremely well. There are a lot of players there which, as I said, have been in the news over the last year. Chong Wei Feng, I think, is, is one of the players we have to talk about. He came back with gold. Yes. Um, a lot of people in the past have said that perhaps he couldn't make it at, at the, the highest levels. His performance in Singapore for you and to him as well, what was it? He played a very solid performance. Uh, some of the best I've seen him play. Uh, he beat players that he would normally not be able to beat. And um, I think he, he was just, he was on a roll in that tournament and he was doing well, he was very focused. Uh, he knew exactly what he wanted to do, the game plans were right. Uh, things were coming off very nicely for him and he succeeded, as you said, coming away from Singapore with the gold. Yeah, it was an all nice and final. Arif Latif was uh, his opponent in that. Yes, and that was another upset uh, that he made the final as well, so we were, very thankful for the fact that we had to, two Malaysians in the final. A lot of big names, Chang Peng Sun, Go Liu Ying. They were just pipped in the end. <laughs> it was, must have been a bit of heartbreak there. Three they, match points, was it? I, I, I think they had even more than three. <laughs> it was unbelievable. We were biting our nails and all the rest of it, but they didn't make it, unfortunately. They played a very good tournament again. Uh, one has to remember that they have been out of the game for a long, long time. And this... Uh, Sea Games and and actually also um, the Suleiman Cup was one of the first two uh, few tournaments they played together again after Koli Ying's yeah. uh, knee injuries and uh, operations and so on. So they did really well. Honestly, I think they played very well to get that silver, and it could, as I said. So easily been a gold. Yeah, it could have been. And that it would have just added on to the headline lot. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about Go Jin Wei later. She had a great, mm. um, well, she had a fantastic SEA Games. Yes. Everything she does is fantastic at her age. But I want to talk about her a little bit later on. What was the impact on these players, this, this mixed 
bunch of players by coming back with such a haul? Were they totally hyped? I think everyone was very, very happy because it was the best performance in the SEA Games for Malaysia since 1977, I think. Yeah. And obviously, to be part of it, everyone, everyone was really happy. And um, you know, coming back, then it's back to day-to-day -day chores and getting ready for the rest of the tournaments. And, but it was uh, it was really hyped up, you know, travelling back from uh, from Singapore, all of us good, in the bus. Yeah, it great, was a good atmosphere. Great vibe. Great vibe. <laughs> yeah. That was your first task or your second task with the Sudoman Cup completed, mm -hmm. and then the big task in in Malaysian badminton, which is of course we have our world number one, Lee Chong Wei. Yes. Now, a lot of people might not know this because, as I said. Uh, in Delhi, you told me the first time you saw Lee Chong Wei, he was about 14, yes. right? So right at the beginning of his career, you went off, you've come back now, you've seen him as essentially, you know, yeah, the best. new hair color, everything. <laughs> he's, he's the best in the world. Um, what's that been like? We'll get to traveling with him in a second, but seeing him grow and come back, what's that been like? Um, I, I must confess that I have obviously followed him over the years as well yeah. and, and seen how he's played and uh, it has made me extremely proud that he's done so well, um, and it's it's a it's a delight. It's it's really um, good to work with him again. He must have been happy to see you again as well. And you've been traveling. You were saying before so many places. It has been incredible itinerary. Taiwan, U.S., Japan, Korea. What's that been like? The whole the whole trip with Chong Wei. Um, I think it's. Uh, it's not easy, I, you know, I, I think that people think, oh, this is, uh, he's just going to get back easily, back to number one on the world ranking and all yeah. that. It's not, so really the, it's, yeah. it's not so easy. You know, he's been out of the game for eight months. He virtually lost all his rankings. Yeah. He's got to fight from scratch. And uh, some of the tournaments he even go into qualification before he goes into the main Something door. he's just not used uh, to Never all. used to yeah. that, never used to do that. So. And obviously, if you add on to it, you know, the, the pressure for him to perform oh. is there all the time. And obviously, uh, sometimes, you know, even though you train well, you do well, you get into the tournaments, you don't have that tournament match feel, fitness. match yeah, fitness. Right. You, you don't have that because you've been out for such a long time. And obviously, that's something that John Wei have to get back into. And that will take time, but everybody yeah. expects that, you know, he just walks in. I think considering and, that, because a lot of, um, I myself thought the same thing, mm. that um, having that amount of suspension and, mm. um, you know, he was still training throughout it, but he you're was, right, it's yeah. not being in tournaments. Um, and it's, it's also that pressure as well, because still there wasn't a clear cut person to succeed Chong Wei as it was going mm. through. So that must have been weighing on his, on his mind a bit as well. I, I don't think that Zhang Wei is, uh, of course he's concerned for Malaysia, of course he's concerned for who is coming after him and all that. But I, in, in all honesty, players are, are, are here, they, they obviously try to maximize yeah. whatever they can for themselves as and when they're there. And, and I think his mind has been purely on you know, how to get back as quickly as possible and as best as possible. Yeah, and th there's also, you know, throughout his career, Lin Dunn himself pretty much set themselves apart when it comes to it, but a lot of other players have come through. Janu Jorgensen, Kenta Momota have all mm. come through. Yes. More threats for him as he starts to build himself back. Yes, uh, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting uh, situation because uh, Lin Dunn has what, he gone chooses, down a little yeah. bit, but you know, it's very unfair to say I think he's three in the world now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, playing wise, he's not playing as well as he did some years ago. But I still think that he's got it somewhere. Yeah. And uh, I think the Olympics will be very, very interesting. That, well, we'll get, we'll get to that in a second, or at least the build up to it. Okay, now, Chong Wei is going to be on his own path, as I said, and yes. you, can, you can best kind of bolster him as he goes, but that, that engine is still there. Let's talk about the engine and some of these other stars that, that have come out. I watched one of them last year in the Purple League, Iskandar Zulkainen. Mm. I thought he had a fantastic uh, smash action. He's very fast around the court. Yes, yes. Um, this year has been good for him. There was the Perak Open and there was the Polish Open as well. What do you see in his game? Do you think he can push it further? Absolutely. Um, he is, is one of the players, I would say, that I have identified because that's not the truth. Uh, but he's one of the players I felt when I was coming here that has definitely not fulfilled his potential. Yeah. 
and um, having many discussions, many talks with him, uh, setting up his plan, the programs, uh, the coaches, the training programs, the tournament programs, everything. Mm. Um, it's been a good journey, uh, him and I. I. I feel that we have very good understanding and um, I think it's already starting to come through, which I think is really nice. Uh, he's playing much, much better and, and I personally think that he should be able to make top 25 in the world within what I would call a reasonable time, let's say uh, one to one and a half years. That's a fantastic, I mean, to come from someone who was in, you know, the top three of the world for 12, 15 years, that's but he, a great... He should, he should be able to make it. He's got the game, he's got the pace. Yeah. Um, we obviously still need to build on his game and all that and his physical abilities and all the rest of it. But I think the, the, core, yeah, the, core, the core is, solid. Yeah. is there and, and we can definitely do it. Okay, well on the women's side, um, an even bigger name <coughs> and a much smaller girl and a yeah. much younger girl. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's, I, I, saw, I saw Go Jin Wei um, mm -hmm. at the Purple League when I was, I was commentating there, I was going there and literally I'd see her walking into the stadium. Her racket bag is almost as big <laughs> as her when she kind of walks in and then yeah. what she does on the court is impeccable. This year, a lot of the international media has started um, looking in and saying, well, this is Malaysia's women's singles future. Yes. I thought, well, yes, definitely. 15 years old, bit heavy to get that kind of pressure right now? Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, again, you know, I think she is, she's a good player. She's a, a raw diamond. Yeah. And we don't really know how it's going to turn out, but the potential is there. And obviously we will build on that potential and, and we will be so much wiser in four to five years time. We'll, it will show how far she is on the international scene at that stage and age. And then right, yeah. we will be able to gauge from there whether she can you know, make it all the way to the top. I don't think she will be uh, uh, in the top in the world when she's uh, 18, 19, 20. She needs uh, time to do, to polish her yeah, game. Yeah, to develop, I to suppose. Develop to develop it, it, yes. The, the women's draw, not criticism, the only comment that has come through has been about emotions, keeping her emotions on the court. But for a 15-year-old, that's got to be <laughs> tough to do. You know, what can you expect? What can you expect? Of course, uh, emotions are running very high and uh, sometimes you cannot control it and, you know, by yeah. all means. She's, she's also, <laughs> she's into a precision game. So, um, you know, her precision to me when I, was, when I was watching her play is absolutely spot on. But if she's two, three millimeters out in her own mind, that's when yeah, it it's, it's, uh, yeah. the, the main thing will be how obviously she can maintain or keep developing her, her pace in her game. Uh, obviously her stamina, the f physical ability and all that. But at the end of the day, it's all about what happens between the 10 centimeters here, between yeah. the two years. If she's strong, uh, mentally strong and have a good game understanding, then she can move really far. And of course, real, real time experience as well, real yeah. world experience. In terms of here at Stadium Dwar, what kind of disciplines do you, do you want to see in all the players common? What's, what's your kind of credo, if, if, if you could say? Um, we, um, there, there, there is no doubt, it's, it's no, no secret if you can say that. It's, uh, physically, uh, the Malaysian players still have to move up. We are not strong enough physically. Right. We have lots and lots of talents. We are gifted, uh, nice, uh, nice strokes, nice, nice Shot talents, makers, shots, yeah. uh, movement on the court. Everything is so nice, smooth, easy. But when it comes to the the nitty gritty, the really, really the hard work, grinding out yeah, results, yes. yeah, yeah, that's that's where we need to work harder. Well, one last look. Um, Olympic 2016 qualification period has started. Uh, you stated your goal is, is the 2020 Olympics, yeah? Yes. Over this year, what kind of tournaments do you expect? What kind of players do you think might shine in the 2016 Olympic period? Um, first of all, we need to qualify players. Yeah. That's obviously the main uh, target for the time being. And, and hopefully, and I believe that we can, we will qualify players in all five categories. Uh, having said that, then obviously the next step is not only to qualify, but to do but well. To do, yeah, to, to do well. The, secondly and thirdly, um, all the players that might go into the Olympics in 2016 
are very experienced players. They are definitely kind of 25, 26, 27 years yeah. old um, and might not be around for the 2020. So one of my big tasks here is actually to look into the next team already, yeah. who is going to be representing Malaysia in 2020 and can we you know, even move it up and get closer to medals and so on. Well, that's the trouble with the Olympics, isn't it? It's just every four yeah, years. Every so four years. It's, it's hard for uh, it's hard for people to aim to. Well, I mean, that's that's fantastic. In the in the immediate future, there's the Denmark and French Opens as yes. well. So you'll be back on a plane <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Uh, actually, I'm not. Uh, some of the uh, other coaches are going. So. Oh. Uh, I stay here in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, for, for a little while to look after the system. Settle in and, and get and everything make, Making going. sure that we, we still push the programs. You have to have a general on the battlefield at all times. Yes. That's, that's great. Morton, thank you for joining us um, today. Best of luck. Obviously, I don't have to thank say you. best of luck. It sounds like a nice organized uh, pyramid that's but going we through. we always need it. You <laughs> always need it all the time. Yes. I would love to come back to you in the, in the next few months to see how that's that going as well. That would be great. Well. You're most welcome. Morton Frost. Thanks for joining us on All Sports Asia. By the way, if you want to catch the uh, commentary that we did, it was a great match. It was Denmark, <laughs> Malaysia. That's been archived on www.allsports.net. Morton, thank you so much for joining us welcome. today. Thank you. For all the rest of you, uh, All Sports Asia, watch, read, listen, and learn. Don't forget.